Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. Now, joining us from Syria is doctor of history. Uh, he's an economist, and he's also very brave. He's a best-selling author. He wrote the unauthorized biography of George H.W. Bush, uh, Bush 41. He wrote the unauthorized biography on Barack Hussein Obama. And I read that thing three and a half years ago and thought, this is unbelievable. Now it's all come out. And uh, so he's nonpartisan. He's covering the issues. And he's in Damascus. He, he's in Syria. Uh, he's over there right now. And again, I'm not saying Assad is some cupcake. It is a dictatorial system with a, a bath party. But they're going to b remove the government and put al-Qaeda in place and turn it into a new jihadi base. Uh, the West is on record funding the uprisings of the last six months and then calling them peaceful democratic, uh, yeah, blowing up police stations and stuff. Same thing in Libya. Now al-Qaeda flies the flag. Webster was there while it was being bombed for weeks, while reporters were being shot. I mean, he was under bombardment. He's now there in Syria giving us a report on how this ties in to the larger strategic operation to overthrow old allies like Mubarak, overthrow others. But then Saudi Arabia is criticizing Syria for shooting back at armed globalist-funded gangs, but when Saudi Arabia is shooting peaceful people. That's hailed as liberal and loving. But when Syria does something even less, which I'm not defending, you know, uh, that then it's just unbelievably horrible and the rest of the Arab League condemning them. I mean, they're moving into a World War III constellation. Webster, you're there. Tell us what's happening, the latest, and why this is why this is going on. Uh, Webster Griffin Tarpley of tarpley.net. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Um, I'm, I just uh, spent the day in the city of Homs, H-O-M-S, uh, and if you w watch any of this uh, coverage that the that the U.S. and European media are putting out, they're telling everybody that Hans is the great tether of this rebellion, the democracy revolt that's supposedly going on in Syria. And I've just been walking all over this place, and I can tell you that this is a complete big lie. It is one big lie. And, of course, it's important for people to know this because uh, the, the people in uh, NATO, right, be it Obama, Sarkozy, uh, Cameron of Britain, they're, they're really willing to go towards some kind of a general war, at least in the in the Middle East, in the name of this destabilization of Syria. So let me just set, set the stage. Uh, starting from Damascus this morning, we drove uh, north on, on a, on a, a four-lane highway, and the, one of the first things you notice when you come to Syria is that it's very different from Libya, that there are no checkpoints. I mean, you, you, you come into the international airport, right, Damascus International Airport, it's functioning normally. There's no special security. It looks pretty much like a normal airport. You drive into the city, first thing you see, no checkpoints. But we now, now have, but, but, but we're told this is a great tyranny. We now have internal checkpoints where TSA now grabs your wife's breasts and your genitals on the highway. So is that why we've got to invade? Because pedophiles don't get to grope Syrian children? Well, th th let me just try to continue. The, the, the idea then is the other thing you, you notice is that... Uh, there, there, there are no checkpoints. I mean, went by, we, I guess we went by two. One is at the at the uh, entrance to the city of Homs. There's a very low key kind of checkpoint, looking at cars, but nothing much. And then, if you want to go visit the governor uh, of of this province, which we did, we went and visited the the governor. Uh, and I want you to know, this was the first delegation of foreign journalists that was allowed to go to the city of Homs, and there were some people from other newspapers, in particular some Catholic journalists from Europe, from Belgium, and, and from uh, from France were there. So we got to meet the, the governor of the city of Homs, and he's accompanied by a group of religious leaders. And, and you got to remember, Syria is a place that has 15% Christians in the population. It's more than Egypt, right? Egypt is 10%. Here it's, it's 15%, so it's more. So you have your Greek Orthodox Metropolitan you have a Greek Catholic. Those are Catholics that, that are more or less connected to Rome with the Pope, and also Syrian Catholic. The Patriarchate of, of Antioch is a very old and very influential one, and that's right here in Syria. So sure, that's
that's the church set up by Paul. So continuing. Yeah, look, that's not that you mentioned it. I, I stayed overnight very close to the place where St. Paul was, was con- uh, converted on the Damascus Road. Uh, and this is a place you can go and you can go and visit. So uh, the governor tells us there is a huge plot, a huge conspiracy against uh, Syria. And uh, the, the religious leaders basically say the same thing. So now we wanted to go and see, with the help of, of um, some of the some of the people from these uh, uh, the patriarchs of the of these uh, Christian churches of the East, go and see the neighborhood which is supposed to be the great center of this rebellion that the BBC talks about all the time. It's a neighborhood called Zara, Z-A-H-R-A. Zara is the place. This is a, it's an area, it's a couple of square miles. Uh, Harms is a city of about one million. That makes it smaller than Damascus. Damascus has about six million. So we go to the neighborhood of Zara, and they tell us, there's a demonstration going on. You're here right at the, at the, at the proper time. So we go, go to see this demonstration, expecting to see people uh, attacking Assad and attacking the government, right? Because that's, that's what the international media have told you is actually going on. This is a demonstration which is pro-Assad. Uh, it's true that they don't like the governor, the guy that we had just met, for various local reasons. And the principal complaint they have is there's not enough heating oil for the people to heat their homes now that the that the winter is coming because it's getting getting rather chilly. And of course, the pretty, sanctions pretty the, the sanctions place. are helping. The sanctions, exactly. That is that's the reason why it's not really the governor's fault. It's because of these sanctions. So then we, after talking to these people for a while, we go to the local hospital. Now, this should be the place where everything is is um, you know made clear because you're you're talking about the Zara neighborhood hospital in Homs, in the great center of this. Re- this, this revolution. And a lot of people, like a spontaneous demonstration forms when this busload of, of Western uh, correspondents uh, parks in front of the, the hospital of, of Zara. And, and people tell us this. They say, today we had seven wounded, five killed. And so we ask, who did it? And they say, snipers. Well, who are they? Well, we don't know. Uh, many, many theories. I'll tell you about that. And they have, obviously, they have some facts. But Today, in this one neighborhood, seven, seven wounded, five dead. But it's not like this is going on everywhere. This is supposedly the center, along with maybe one or two other places in the entire country. And by the way, and you the- you have made a beeline right to where the snipers are. We should point out Tarpley's very brave. But, I mean, Webster, to be clear here, uh, because I, I just do the research. I just go off the facts. And it's just like al-Qaeda being put in to the east of Libya and now taking over and flying the al-Qaeda flag and saying... They're going to, you know, put in Al-Qaeda law and all this stuff. And thousands of shoulder-fired surface-to-air missiles are gone. And our media just says, oh, ignore that. But I've gone and looked up even what Voice of America admits. It is armed groups that pop up sometimes in clear Western CIA uprisings, shoot people, and our media calls them democracy activists. So clearly, this is not an excuse to attack Syria. But, but, but now they've gotten the Arab League to come in a miscreant fashion and start, you know, calling for sanctions, further sanctions. So I guess they're all afraid. But, but, but as long as they back all this, I guess they won't be the person next who's taken down. But what the, what the people say is this. In other words, I've, I've, I spent the last couple of hours in the middle of a, of a crowd of a couple of hundred people who wanted to be heard. And anybody who could speak a little French or a little English would come to the fore and they, they wanted to be heard because there were some television cameras and, and people were asking questions. So this was their chance to be heard. Again, it's the first group of foreign journalists to come into the city of Homs. Anybody who claims that they had been here, uh, but be it Al Jazeera, they never were here. The BBC was never here. So today we were there. So then we, we were trying to ask them, who is doing this? Who is who, who are these snipers? Well, the first thing you see is that it's a series of random killings. It's blind terrorism. It's agile provocateur. And they say, look, uh, the thing that we're afraid of is when we go out, we're afraid of snipers shooting at us from sure, the Sure, stay there, Webster. It's the classic thing where it's just a projection. These hired terror groups just create violence to point at it, you know, to point at it and say, see, there's a conflict. So it's full spectrum dominance where they create just a conflict and then project onto it whatever they want. 
Webster Tarpley from Damascus, Syria. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Webster Griffin Tarpley is in Syria. He's in the area where they say the uprisings keep originating from. He's right there where these snipers are shooting people every day. No one knows which side they're on. It, it, it's all fluid. Uh, Webster is an expert on false flag provocateur. Uh, continuing, and because and, and, uh, I know you're there, you can tell people what's really happening, but separately, Webster, then let's look at the larger geopolitical of why this is happening now and what the end game is. Please continue. Let me just tell you what the, what these people say, because I think this is, this is what's, what's really unique about this. That you talk to these people, right? And I've talked to all kinds of people, right? An English teacher, a couple of doctors in this hospital, a couple of nurses, uh, French, English, whatever it is. And here's what they you ask them, who is doing this? And again, it's, it's random killings. So first of all, they say, there's no pattern to what they do. They kill Christians, they kill Muslims. Among the Muslims, they kill Sunnis, they kill Alawites. They kill uh, others. They kill people who don't have any particular religious identity. They kill members of the army. Five terrorists today got together and killed one soldier in this Zara neighborhood. So you keep pressing them and you say, all right, who's doing it? Who's doing it? And they say, here's, here's where they think it comes from. The governor says that most of the killers that he sees are actually Syrians. But when you talk to the people, they say, yeah, it's true. There are Syrians who are doing the shooting. But behind them, there's more. And then you say, well, who are they? And they say, Saudi Arabia is providing the money. Turkey is providing a lot of the help. Turkey is not that far from, from, uh, from here. Uh, and then you, they, how about some more? They say Qatar, right? The wonderful homeland of Al Jazeera television. The Qatar is heavily... So it's the same United crew Arab that, the, that NATO used to soften things up with Gaddafi. In Libya, exactly. United Arab Emirates, uh, important. They also say the Hariri faction of Lebanon, Rafi Hariri the Younger. And they say, watch out for Hariri. His mother is from Saudi Arabia. This is a bad apple. Rafi Hariri is, is also a part of it. And, of course, Lebanon is also very, very, very close. And then some of them, if you keep prodding, they'll say, yeah, and the CIA, of course, and Mossad, and um, others, right? NATO, other, other, other forces in Europe. So uh, they'll also tell you these people are, um, they're the Muslim Brotherhood. They're people who may have been in Al-Qaeda or they're Salafists. Uh, Salafists is just another, another brand of this extreme uh, religious fundamentalism. Some of them just say those are fundamentalists and um, anathematizers. In other words, they're, they're religious sectarians who say that everybody's bad except them. The, the governor talked a lot about mafia, organized crime, and you got the idea drug pushers. So it looks to me like this has been thrown together. But the, the, the finding that I would have to make at this point, after having really heard a lot of very important first-person testimony, this problem is in the hundreds. It's, it's, it's not more than several hundred of these killers um, with, with a certain amount of backup. Now, how much that is, is hard to say. I asked some very intelligent people in this, in this hospital today, what should the Syrian government do? And they say, simple, send more army troops. They say, we want soldiers on the roofs of the houses, on the, on the, on the top floors of apartment houses. We'd like to have some tanks in the streets, but above all, we'd like to have some soldiers on the roof. Because when, if the soldiers get up on the roof, then the snipers can't go there, and they can't do it. I was, I was talking to a young woman doctor who was about to, to walk home, and as she walks home, she's got to worry about, about getting, getting shot, like right? just getting shot. I was shown a picture of a, of a three- or four-year-old girl who was shot dead in, her, in an automobile with her mother and some other little, little girls. Now, there is one exception to this, this sniper rule, which is that kidnappings do go on, and there are significant kidnappings going on. The kidnapping is, all, is often a prelude to a murder. I, I visited uh, with this group a, a, a bereaved family, and their son had been killed. Their son was a taxi driver. These were Alawites. They, they belonged to the same ethno-religious group as, as the Assad family, but these, these, were, these were people. Right? The guy was a taxi driver. So he was kidnapped by these, as they said, fundamentalists, People with beards is often the, what you hear, too. He was kidnapped, and then he was murdered. In other cases, bodies have been dismembered. They've been cut into.
into dozens of parts. There are also stories that I won't go, go into maybe now, but about the, the mutilation of women victims. Yeah, but let me just stop you. We'll get into that when we come back. And you're joining us from Syria. Dr. Webster Tarbley joins us.